Hey, it is Elizabeth Off Grid, and I'm, today I'm going to be talking to with you about my budget. So, how much does it cost for me to live in a car, and what I spend money on? What's my income? What are my expenses? And I'm going to give you actual, real numbers. Now, I will say that this is something I'm still working on. I still want to reduce more of my expenses, and obviously, I want to make more money because that'd be a good thing too. And I'm working to pay off debt and on all those kinds of things, and also my expenses do change a lot from month to month. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to show you a spreadsheet where I've taken how I track things and put it in a spreadsheet to kind of have my budget. Now, the truth is I actually keep track of everything using a notebook because I find that writing all my expenses down what I spend every day, every I do this every day is very helpful for me to really keep on top of my finances because then I really know how I'm spending money. However, you know, it's easier to see things, to see numbers on a spreadsheet with kind of summed up and stuff. So that is what we're going to do. All right, let me go ahead and start doing the screen flow software so you can actually see what I'm talking about. This is my bu current budget for how I spend money right now. Now, the truth is this isn't a budget that I is I sat down and decided what I should spend. This is actually what I spend because these are real numbers and kind of doing an average of a typical month. All right. So the income that I get in is this first section. So it's a little over $6,000 a month when you add up everything, my salary from my law firm. So it's a legal work I do for clients and I have a corporation. So I actually get a paycheck, like a normal paycheck. Distributions are from all my YouTube channels, the ads on those YouTube channels. And right now I'm distributing to myself $1,000 a month. I actually in the future will be distributing more, more like $2,000 a month. But right now I'm buying some more equipment and things like that for my YouTube channel and both of them. And so I didn't want to spend everything. Didn't, I'm not distributing all the profits right now because I have a little bit of expenses. But my YouTube channels have a very, very tiny overhead. It's really just if I buy new equipment or things. So this will most likely go up to $1,500 or even $2,000, but that's what I have distributed to myself this month at least. I have a rental property, a house that I rent out to people. This 1404 is not how much the rent is. That is after subtracting off the amount of money that goes to the people who manage it. So I have a company who gets 10% of the rent and they manage that. Miscellaneous, it says zero, but every month it seems like I have some other random income comes in, like, you know, a tax refund for this or this or, or, you know, some sort of weird distribution for that. I mean, there's always like some weird thing that comes in, but I can't plan on that. So it says zero. So then I have a little over $3,000 that go out to loan payments. Now this is changing a little bit because I have different loans that have started payments that well, the last time I put this in here wasn't there. So like this is that number that's still changing a little bit. And I plan to put extra payments on those loans so I can pay them off faster. These are all fixed rate loans. I did a whole video about that. I'll link it here or down in the description or something. Then there's all my bills. Okay. So a little under $900 of bills. My phone is paid for by my business, by my law firm. I do not yet have an internet hotspot. I plan to get one, but I haven't gotten it yet. So I have my satellite communicator. I have the water bill in my rental house. So in the state where that is, or in the city of where my rental house is, it is kind of the custom that the landowner pays for water and sewage. I think it is what that bill is. Um, I have health insurance. I have VSP, which is vision. I have my insurance for property. That is my car. That is the rental house. That is my renter's insurance that, you know, all the property insurances. And then my life insurance is life insurance, obviously planet fitness, my storage room. Okay. When I first got it, it was like $85 for the first, I don't know, year. And now it's $160. So then I have Apple care and I have an, an iCloud. I have no robo, which is so I don't get all kinds of spam calls on my phone. I have Kindle unlimited right now. And I have, I pay $10 to the ACLU every month as, as one of their contributors or whatever it is. So those are all the bills that happen automatically that I'm saving a bunch of money right now. So I'm saving a hundred dollars a month for my, the, the down payment on my next vehicle, $375 a month for my emergency fund and a hundred dollars a month for retirement. Now, the 375 for the emergency fund, hundred dollars for the next car savings. That is going to change when I hit five grand for each one, which will happen this year. So when I do that, then that money will go to paying off debt or to my Roth IRA or something else, you know, so I won't just keep saving money like that. 
So my total fixed and bills is about $4,500. Then variable. So these are things that do change a lot from month to month. And I do have some control over how much money I spend. The biggest thing in this is food and supplies. So I have one budget that one category that is groceries, dining out, you know, paper products, toiletries, all those food and supply things. And that the reason I track that all together is because if I spend more money on groceries, then I dine out less. If I dine out more, I'm spending less money on groceries. Also because when I go to buy things like, for example, I go to buy shampoo, I buy that at Trader Joe's. So I'm also buying my shampoo and conditioner and the same thing as I'm buying food. So tracking all that out separately, it just ain't gonna happen. I rarely go to a store and just buy supplies like paper towels. I'm also buying food while I'm there, you know? So it just makes sense to put that all in one thing. And so, and also because dining out and groceries are dynamic and they depend on each other, it makes sense to track it all together. That is my food and supplies budget. Now it's $750. I could totally get that down to be a lot less. However, that would require a couple of things. One is I have to cook. I have to not just cook, but cook more from scratch. And that is a difficult thing to do when living in a car. And I've kind of given myself permission right now because I'm just living at Honda Civic because I have very, very little space that I'm not going to be hardcore about getting that budget down. It really should be less than half of that, okay? Way less than half of that if I was actually cooking stuff from scratch, but I'm not. So this is what it is. Half of this budget is dining out. And so like, for example, let me go look back at one of my recent budgets. Yeah, I spent about half of it dining out, which is a whole lot of inexpensive things. Um, the most expensive is probably Panera bread, like um, Panda Express and Panera bread are probably the most expensive places I've gone. Besides that, it's been, you know, McDonald's or going to the Whole Foods hot bar or Taco Bell. I mean, these, these are not like fancy pants things that I'm doing. And it's typically when I'm in town, when the weather is not good enough to cook. I mean, it's stuff like that. And I've just, yeah, I've given myself permission to do that. And I don't feel guilty about it because that's fine. But also I get, go to grocery stores and places like that to get um, convenience foods that are healthy and simple to eat, like prepared salads. And one of the things to remember too is I cannot, there's a lot of foods that a lot of people can eat that I actually can't eat just that because it would be too many carbs for me as a diabetic. So like I can't eat beans and rice. I can eat beans or rice, but I can't eat both together. That is way too many carbs. And like the carb protein fat ratio isn't right for me, for my blood sugar. So there's a lot of cheap ways to eat that I can't do. I have to, I have to eat a lot of vegetables and things like that. And I obviously I get that McDonald's has like no vegetables besides potatoes, which are not a vegetable. They're a carb. When I go to McDonald's, it's usually just like a breakfast sandwich and a coffee is what I get there. I go there for breakfast. And, but that's why I'll have I go to Panera Bread, for example, because I can get soup, uh, you know, a vegetable based soup and a sandwich, or I can get a sandwich with a salad, you know, and I actually eat a very good tasting and healthy rounded meal, um, but I also get takeout salads from the grocery store. That's a really good place to get inexpensive grab and go food. I plan to do a video in the future about grab and go food. And then yes, I do cook food. But a lot of times when I cook food, I can't cook it the most cheap way. Because for example, making rice from scratch is just not logistically feasible. It takes a lot of time because you're either using a rice cooker or you are cooking it on a stove top. And that's a lot of propane or electricity to cook rice for 20 minutes or 45 minutes, or, you know, it depends on what you're cooking, what kind of rice. So I get rice that's it. That's not even instant rice. It's actually already cooked rice, which is way more expensive than buying rice that is uncooked and you have to cook. So there's a lot of things that I would totally do if I was living in a house or apartment that I don't do living in a car. Now, one of my plans for the Subaru Outback is I will have a space inside to cook with electricity and then I will make more food from scratch and save more money and get this budget from $750 to like more like $300, you know, something like that. I think that would be like, if I was living in an apartment, that's what my budget would be. My budget would be 300 or maybe $400 the most. It would not be 70. All right. So gasoline, this is something that wildly changes depending upon how much I'm traveling. So $174, you're somewhere under 200 bucks is a fairly typical amount. I'm also in California. Gas is bizarrely expensive. When I'm traveling a lot, first, a lot of times I'm outside of California, so the gas costs less. Now, gas 
is the biggest variable for when I'm traveling. If I'm staying here in town, the San Francisco Bay Area, and just driving around a little bit, my gas prices, my gas will be way less than this. If I'm traveling for an entire month, which I haven't done yet, it'd be a lot more. But if I was traveling up more, I would cook a lot more, including cooking from scratch, because I do that more when I'm in campgrounds and my food and supplies budget would be lower. So, you know, it's all depends on it. Now, discretionary is kind of this big category that I don't have to spend anything on, really, but I tend to. This is travel, new clothes. Travel includes like campsites and stuff. And stuff for my build and yeah, paying for camping sites, stuff for hobbies, all those things. Car maintenance and repair. That's, you know, getting an oil change, whatever. Um, medical and prescriptions. This also changes from month to month. Some months I spend a lot more than this because I'm ordering all my CPAP supplies or whatever. And then some months I spend a lot less. It depends if what has to get done. Education is... I take classes at community college. And so the, it is stuff like buying the book for the class or, or whatever. That really depends. Gifts. I mean, most months I spend nothing, but then it'll be like, I'll buy Christmas presents. And so then, you know, so the idea is like $600 a year is a fairly reasonable amount. I actually think I probably spend a lot less than that. Laundry, $10. I do, I, for the, usually for the dryers, I use quarters at the laundromat where I go at here in town. And then for the washing machine, I, this is like two loads laundry. I do laundry two or three times a month. So not very much. So my total variable expenses is 1400 Total expenses overall is six grand, And that leaves me with nothing left over. The reason it says negative three is because it's just one of those weird things when you have fractions and you're adding things all up or dividing them or whatever. And then you end up with weird little bits of numbers. But the idea here is that it about nets out. There are some months where I spend more than I make because something happens. And then there are some months where I way underspend and I have extra leftovers and it, it tends to work out and all work out of the wash. So that is the how I am spending money. So the fixed and bills and debt payments and all that stuff, like the debt payments, three grand, I mean, that is eventually going to go away. I'm eventually going to pay those off, right? The bills, the of these bills, I, I eventually I'm going to get an internet hotspot, so that will go up. Now, the storage unit, that's how my expensive storage units are around here. You can get into a new storage unit and have it be cheap for a year, but then you got to move all your stuff, you know what I mean, and pay for you all to move all your stuff. So, yeah, it all, all worked out. Some of this insurance is actually my son's, and I actually do get reimbursed for that, but I... I can't remember what the split is, so I didn't put it in here. So this action number should be a little bit less. You know, yes, I could cancel my Kindle Unlimited, but I actually like reading those books. You know what I mean? Like there's things where I'm like, I could cancel a few of these things, but the big things are I'm not going to be doing anything about. And actually my health insurance is actually less now than it was last year. For my expenses, as I talked about, obviously the discretionary, I could spend zero on this stuff in theory, but really I'm always gonna want a little bit of camping sites. I'm, you know, like there are things I'm always going to want to do a little bit of. This would also include staying for a hotel. I'm actually going to train the word travel to hotel because that's more realistic. So hotel, clothes, build, gear, camping, hobbies, go to the movies, you know, paying for the annual pass for whatever. It's like all those kinds of things. I probably spend less on gifts. It, it's my, my expenses have changed a lot since I moved into a car. So I'm still kind of figuring out how much I usually spend in an entire year. I do plan to, to spend more money paying off debts. Part of that will come from when I have more distributions, which I probably will do next month. And I plan to work on cutting down my food and supplies budget in half effectively. And this 750 is actually kind of the high end. I've had months where I actually have spent a lot less than that, but I kind of give myself that room. Because one of the things too is when I, when the weather's terrible or if I have a migraine or if I'm sick or whatever, that's when I say to myself, look, you know, I have a migraine. I'm not going to force myself to cook in the 30 something degrees. I am going to let myself go to Panera and get some soup, you know? So I always want to have room in my budget for that kind of stuff. And so I don't have to force myself to do something that isn't going to work. And then I don't, I'm actually not eating enough. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's not a good idea. Also, I have to eat more food when it's cold because my body has to heat it, it itself up. And so when I'm hiking a lot or when it's really cold and, you know, there's various, and when I'm at elevation, I actually have to eat more food to deal with the environmental factors or health factors issues with that. I always will have probably a larger budget than somebody else, partly because I'm eating as a diabetic 
which means more vegetables and, and things that are expensive and more meats that are, and that are expensive. And also because I'm giving myself room for when I have troubles that I feel free to go get something to eat if that's how I need to get through my day. I am putting stuff into savings and I am paying off debt. I plan to do a lot more of that. And as I pay off debts and free up more money, I will be saving more and I will also be getting a new vehicle and all that stuff. And that's one of the things I'm gonna have to do is I will have to have room in my budget for the loan payment on the new car, right? So yeah, this is something that's gonna change as few. So one of the things is a lot of people move into their car so they can save money and so they can not have to pay rent. And that's something to important to remember. I My rent for a two bedroom that was not fancy pants here in the San Francisco Bay area was all, was $2,700 a month, $2,775 is the way I think my last apartment was. It was a two bedroom because my son lived with me at the time. That was not, it was, and it was not a luxury place. It wasn't bad, but it was not a luxury place. Rent is incredibly expensive here. And so not having that three grand or anything similar to it, you know, that, is one of the things that's making it possible for me to pay off all this debt and stuff like that. Now, in the future, once I get the debt paid off, it will free up, you know, thousands of dollars for me to do other things. And that will be wonderful. But in it for now, yeah, I, I think the thing that really surprises me the most about this is I had no idea that I would be spending so much money on food and supplies. I was thinking three, I was actually originally budgeted $400 a month and thought I was being generous but it was not realistic because I thought I was going to cook from scratch and because that's how I would cook when I lived in an apartment, you know, but nope, that is not how I cook because I don't cook most of the time when I'm like in town or when I'm actually relocating myself. When I'm camping, dispersed camping, campground camping, whatever, or even sleeping in rest stops, but not driving all day, like I'm not driving from one state to another, then I do cook, you know, I enjoy cooking. There's definitely something to say about if I have convenient things for eating, it frees up energy so I can use that to make more money. So it's hard to say like, if I have more energy to make more money, that may make up more than the amount of money that I would have saved by cooking everything from scratch. Because if you're cooking from scratch and you're in a house or apartment, that's much easier. You can put stuff in a crock pot. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be hard to cook from scratch. I used to use my oven all the time. And that's the thing is when I have my Subaru Outback, I'm planning to cook with electricity a lot. And I'll have my little electric cooker that I use. I'll have my air fryer that can be used kind of like an oven. I mean, there'll be so many ways I'll be able to cook because I'll have a little bit more space. I just need a tiny bit more space inside the car to be able to cook inside. I'll also, I won't use propane inside. I'll also cook from the back and cook outside using propane. But yeah, I, I'm excited about it and looking forward to it. And that's one of the reasons that I'm not being harsh with myself about having an overly large food and supplies budget because I eat out so much and use so much convenient food because I'm just kind of getting through the next amount of time. So I have enough money saved up so I can buy the super Outback and then save money and then, you know, cook more and stuff like that and not um, be spending on money on that. Of course, it'll you know, I'll have the payment on the Subaru. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes, but this is my budget as of January, 2024. And then I'll probably do another video like this in the future saying what my new budget is of things. All right. Again, this is Elizabeth off grid. If you want to share what your budget is, how much money you spend on various different things, especially if you're living in some kind of vehicle, feel free to post that below. Or of course you can just stop by and say, hi, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.